What's up guys, week three is now over. So now we're doing the upper limb, so we're doing the arms, uh, shoulder. If you think about it, there's a muscle for every action you do with your fingers. A muscle does every single one of those. So that must mean there's a lot of muscles. And let me tell you, there are a lot of muscles. Holy cow. So we have to memorize all the muscles, nerves, innervations, origins, insertions. Whew. This last week has been nuts. Our next test is going to be on, not this Monday, but next Monday. So next weekend's going to be kind of crazy. We'll see how that goes. This week we did have some cool first experiences though. Um, so this week we did our first ultrasound. That's my little baby right there. So our school has an ultrasound, an ultrasound course for all the doctors. So right now, ultrasound for dummies. Welcome to ultrasound for dummies. First off, we start with a piece of skin. And we have a thing called a probe. It sends out sound waves. And these sound waves bounce back off of structures inside of your body and go back and it shows a picture. This is the picture of it inside your body. Essentially, it's like sonar used for like finding submarines down in the water. They send out sound waves into the water and the sound waves bounce off back off the submarine. It's the same principle, using sound waves to find things, except it's in your body. These sound waves are between 1 and 15 megahertz. Smaller frequency can penetrate deeper into the skin, but it's not as clear. And a higher frequency is a lot clearer, but it can't penetrate as deep into the skin. So there's always a trade-off between what ultrasounds don't pass through air. That gel allows sound waves to pass through to your skin and through your body. They also can't go through bone or stones, you know, like gallstones, kidney stones. So you can see them, but you can't see anything behind them. All right, so what we did, we had our neck here. This is our neck. And we had our jugular vein and our carotid artery. And we put our transducer or probe on top and we started sending sound waves down into the butt. And when you press down, the jugular vein actually squishes. That's how we were able to tell between the artery and the vein. Ultrasound our rib cage. So we have our skin and a couple of ribs and here's the probe. And you notice that the ribs, they block the sound. So you can't see anything past the sound waves, but between the ribs, you can th see deeper down. And really the reason that we're learning how to use ultrasound is eventually we want to be able to diagnose disease with it. So there you go, that's ultrasound for dummies. But yeah, looking at our jugular right here, between the ribs, right here. So yeah, I'm just learning, you know, still don't really know how to do it or uh, what I'm looking for. But it was pretty cool to be able to see, uh, get some instruction on how to do it. All right, we also had our first hands-on uh, kind of like manipulation class. That was pretty, I don't know, I thought it was pretty cool. Some students really didn't like it. Something cool that we learned in there. In your range of motion, there's something called an anatomical barrier and a physiological barrier. So, you know, let's say I rotate my humerus. This is my physiological barrier because this is what I can do personally. But if you have someone else come in and you like stabilize your shoulder and bend it back even further until it can't go anymore, that's your anatomical barrier. We did that on several joints, you know, shoulder joints, elbows, you know, knees, hips. So we kind of like manipulated the joints around a little bit to see what kind of, I don't know, what they felt like, the difference between anatomical barrier versus physiological barrier. Of course, we have our dissecting. We're continuing our dissecting of the upper, upper limb, upper arm. And there's something called the brachial plexus. Plexus, kind of like a joining or a junction of nerves. So you have your C5 through T1 nerves. So your vertebrae, your cervical vertebrae and one of your thoracic vertebrae. All those nerves come out and they kind of join up, mix it up a little bit into called the brachial plexus. And then those nerves break off into three, I don't know, like there's cords, branches, five terminal branches that go down your arm, up into your shoulder, and they innervate and make your muscles move. So nerves make your muscles move. So we had to learn all about that. I'm still learning, haven't got it down yet. That's why this next week. But yeah, so it's a pretty typical week in medical school, I think. Um, Someone's hungry, I think. I gotta go get her some food. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Good luck.